Hallelujah. Give Jesus some praise tonight, church. We want to welcome all those joining us online. God bless you. Thank you for being faithful and joining us, even if by chance you're just checking us out. I pray that Jesus touch you in your curiosity, that you be touched like you've never been touched before. Amen. Come on, give Jesus another praise in the house, church. Give it up for what's going on in Lavernia, Texas. Amen. With the apostle out there. That was a weak clap. Come on, I think we can do better than that, church. Don't ever let me ask you that again, amen? <laughs> you know why? I'm telling you, when the Lord says something, the Lord says something, amen? If I'm the, the mouthpiece of the Lord, amen? I'm just telling you, you got to give it all you got the first time. I'm telling you, get out of your seats right now, people of God, and shake somebody's hand. Come on, shake somebody's hand. I love this thing when all of you just get out of your seats. I'm going to call you out if you don't get out of your seats. I'm going to watch you and make sure you're following what I've asked you. Come on, get out of your seats. Take somebody's hand. Those God bless you that are joining us, I shake your hands in the spirit. Amen. We love you. We are excited. Come on, come on, come on. We are excited in the house. Get out of your seats and shake somebody's hands. Amen. Cade, come on, get out of your seat and shake somebody's hand. Cade, come on, shake somebody's hand. Somebody go to Cade, shake his hand. Shake his hand, come on, somebody. It could be that touch that makes a difference in somebody's life. It could be that touch that changes their life, amen? Because if we're extension of Jesus, come on, amen? Hallelujah, give it up for Jesus one more time tonight. I'm excited. I am excited. You can go ahead and have a seat because y'all are just excited about what's about to happen. Amen. God is good. God is faithful. We are faithful. Amen. I'm excited. So just a couple of announcements. Remember, Lavernia is going tonight. It's happening again tonight for the third night. And tomorrow is the fourth night. So if you have an opportunity to go out there tomorrow, praise God, please go out there tomorrow. But if you don't, that's okay. If you don't, I mean, I was joining in online yesterday, and Apostle said, you should have been here, and click, it turned off. And I was like, what? What? I was like, we were there by the Spirit. We were listening. He goes, well, you should have been here. I was like, I was like, what'd you say, man of God? And I already knew what he was going to say, because I already know the testimony. I mean, was his testimony is my testimony. I've been married 30 years, you know what I'm saying? I think I already know. I was like, I know you, man of God. I know you. I know, which he's like, well, if you knew, you shouldn't have asked. I said, yeah, well, I wanted to know. You know, but it, we have a lot of fun. It's okay to have fun, amen. Praise the Lord. How do you do it, Apostle, Apostle Cindy, while Apostle's out there? I said, it's okay. Sometimes I don't even talk to him, but you know what? I know him. I said, sweetheart, have you eaten breakfast? He's like, no, well, you ain't here. And I said, wait. I guess you're going to lose some weight, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's just between us. What goes around at FFL, he should have been here. He should have been here. You see what I'm saying? We can have a good time. I like to have fun. Amen. In life, we can have fun. It's okay. If you're being stagnant, that's on you. Not in my house. Not in, that's not my story. That's not FFL story. I'm excited because we can have a lot of fun. Amen. I'm just really excited. But glory to God, I know that you're excited and you're ready with your seed. Amen. Come on. Y'all ready with your seed? Whether it's your tithe or offering, you're faithful in the house. Those that are joining us online, don't miss out. You want to be faithful. And I thank you, everybody that's been faithful, that's been doing it online, on Cash App, on the app. I'm telling you, there's been some stuff going around with the app. This is what's happening. Please don't be sending me all these messages. Everybody's like, oh, my God, the app, the app, the app. Those of you that have Androids and those of you that have Apple, it's just all kinds of stuff going on. They're doing all kinds of stuff. The best thing to do is go on to FFLchurch.org and through, do it on there. Am I correct, Brent? Going through the app, I had to get a hold of Brent, too. He's my, you know, give it up for Brent, who does so much in the house. Y'all don't even know what he does, but I just, I'm very grateful for him. He's been with us a long time, you know, but there's just some stuff going on. So anything about the seed, you can definitely go into Cash App. You know, we can do all that, but also go through FFL. Once they get all that squared away, that'll be fine. But right now they're doing all kinds of stuff. It works, but if you have Android, you should be able to do great. You have Apple, oh, well, figure it out. You know I got an Android. You know, you can't tell me nothing. Apple just, man. Hey. No, but that's okay. Some of my sons and my daughters, I got Apple. It's all right. We're all together in the spirit. It's all right. 
But Android, give it up for all the Androids out there. Hey. Should I say give it up for all the Apple guys? I'd be all like, hey. <laughs> I say we even, we even. It's okay, it's okay. I love y'all anyway, but that's what's the point. Y'all are hogging up the whole internet thing. <laughs> but you know what? You know what I really enjoy is that y'all are so faithful that even if Subsplash is not up, Mom, I just want to let you know I sent it in the mail. Mom, you know what? I got my seat because I'm going to go ahead and sew it over there. Are you there at the church? I'm telling you, that's what I like. Mom, I did it on the app. I did it, on, on, I did it already on the cash app. I did it on this. I'm, I'm excited. I like it because you know what? You're faithful. If one didn't work, you're going to go the other way because you know what? It belongs to the Lord is the Lord's. Amen. Don't touch it. Don't touch it and start fixing your stuff. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't touch it. What's God's is God's. I know you husbands be touching it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, you're not. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, that's not even funny. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give you, I'm, I'm going to have the honor of taking up the offering tonight. Amen. How many of you like my sermons of offering? <laughs> How many of you like my books? <laughs> Yeah, this past time when Apostle was here Wednesday, I'm going to go ahead and confess. I told Apostle, I said, go ahead and do the offering, man of God. He goes, it's got to be a quick one. I said, ain't no quick one with me. He's like, you're doing a sermon? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I got people telling me when I send out the apps, how many of you are getting your apps from the app? Pretty amazing, huh? I got people telling me, you writing your book yet? I was like, well, every time you go into the app and get all the messages, they're getting longer and longer. I said, yeah, well. I just need, it's always, even if it's just for one person that receives that app message, guess what? It's amazing. It preaches to me first. But this is the time when I say, pause time. Good morning. Pause time. I literally want you to pause. I want you to pause and just read. It could be for somebody. And somebody always sends me a message like, oh, my God, Mom, that was for me. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited about that. That is, even if it's just touching one person, that's all that matters. Amen? Amen. Well, while you get yourself ready with your seed, or if you go ahead and come up and do that, you can do that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and give you what God has given me. In, Deuteron in Deuteronomy 14, 22 through 23, God instructed the Israelites, Thou shalt, not t shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. Amen. Of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and of the firstlings, of the herds, and of the flocks, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Whatever your current situation, kind of tap on your neighbor, say whatever your current situation. They may be going through something you're not aware of. Tithing is a key to learning to live in the fear of God. And God has promised to give wisdom and blessing to those who fear him. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. That's in Proverbs 22.4. As Christians, people of God, you are encouraged to set your hearts to your hearts on what truly matters, not on the, the the things of the earth, the silly things of the earth. Amen. That's in Colossians 3, 1 through 2. It says this. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those, thi those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. This is in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Set, number two says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Come on, amen. Talk to your neighbor, say, it's for you. Jesus challenged his disciples. You ready? Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where the moth and the rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupt and where thieves do not break, though, nor, nor do they steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your... I said that last week. Listen. Sowing. Here we go. Your tithe and beyond are ways that you can honor God and be a part in meeting the needs of others. As you obey the Lord with your tithe, by faith in this area of your life, he also promises to pour out his blessing upon you. Thank you, Lord, for pouring out your blessing upon me. Amen. Bring ye, he says. This is in Malachi 3.10. Ready? Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse. What's your storehouse? 
Who said that? What child said that? Was it you? Oh, that's you're the child. The church. What's the storehouse, children? The church. That there may be meat in my house and prove me now. What does the Lord say? Prove me now. Say the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Come on, I'm telling you, many of you should have gotten up on that one. I'm telling you, as you prepare to sow your offering today, remember that your gift does not simply disappear into a collection basket. Instead, it is entrusted to God and used for his purposes. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you got that? So, y'all got that? Y'all got that? I have you on camera saying you got it. Don't give grudgingly out of obligation. Don't give it as a bill. Do it in honor. But give with joyful hearts, knowing that God will take your gift and use it. As you sow, remember that your gift is not just about meeting a financial need, but about making an eternal impact in your life. Your gift is a seed that will reap a harvest of blessings for you and others. Come on, let's arise. I'm going to have you to make this confession tonight. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, tonight I bring my tithe and my gift into your storehouse. I believe in your word where it says that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. I stand on it. I have faith in it. And I act on my faith at this moment. Thank you, Lord, for my blessing. In Jesus' name, I receive. Now you sow your seed. Come on, Ashley. I take back what hey. belongs to me. Command, Command the darkness to lose what's mine. Hey. I take back what belongs to me. Command the darkness to lose what's mine. I take back what belongs to me. Command the darkness to lose what's mine. I take back what belongs to me. Command the darkness to lose what's mine. God is giving me favor. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take it, I take it, I take it right now. I take
take it right now. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. I take it. I take it. I take it right now. that sow tonight even online father they're in your system of sowing we take it right now lord everything every need lord your word says that you supply every need according to his riches and glory by christ jesus so father god right now every need is met father god you know the needs of your people so we thank you lord that your word says you supply every need as they are faithful, Father, in their offering, Lord, in their tithing. Lord, I thank you for meeting that need. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we glorify you. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give Jesus some praise tonight, church. Y'all ready? We are ready for the word tonight. Let's go ahead and arise. Let's go ahead and arise and get my son Eric strictly in the house. Son. Give it up for Jesus tonight. We love you, son. Give it all you got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus again. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I feel God. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God already. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just... Just raise your hands right there with you. Let's just worship just a bit longer. Woman of God, I just feel the presence of God doing something already. He's been moving during worship. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I don't want to waste one second 
in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just bask in his presence a bit longer. Worship Having you is worth my everything. I just want your presence with me. Time and time and time and time again. I don't care about the price it costs me. Having you is worth my everything. I just want your presence with me. Time and time and time and time again. I don't care about the price it costs me. I just want your presence with me Time and time and time and time again I don't care about the price it costs me Having you is worth my everything I just want your presence with me Time and time and time and time again I don't care about the price it costs me the glory and the honor almighty God oh father God we yield to you Lord tonight Lord Holy Spirit have your way in this house tonight oh God in each and every man woman and child Lord God oh father I say have your way let your rain fall let your glory fall in this house tonight oh God touch us right now oh God hey people of God touch him now in the name of Jesus
Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I thank you, mighty God. I thank you, God. El Gabor. Mighty God, Father. Jehovah Nissi. Hallelujah. Oh, our provider, our healer, oh, mighty God. You're everything that we need, oh, Lord, tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you're even here right now. You're already touching. You're already healing, oh, God. You're already restoring, oh, God. You're already lifting up, oh, God. Oh, shatare ke tere boso. In the mighty name of the Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father. Oh, Father God, just move through the aisles, oh God. Move through the seats, oh God. On your people tonight, oh mighty God, Father. May the word manifest deep within each of us tonight, oh God. May the revelation of your word move in power. Move with fire and glory, Father. In Jesus' mighty name tonight, oh God. Oh, Not one left behind tonight, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. I thank you that we all leave higher. We all leave better, oh God. Better than we came, oh God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, your word says, oh God, as we enter into your presence, we never leave the same, oh God. Hallelujah. I thank you that the earth shook, oh God, in your presence, Father. Oh, Father, I thank you that the earth is shaking right now, oh God, in this house, Lord God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, oh Father, we lift up our headship to you tonight. We lift up our apostles to you, Apostle Nathan and Cindy Sloan, oh God, in, my, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father. I thank you that there's fire moving in Lavernia, Texas right now, God. I thank you, Father God, there's fire moving right now, God. I thank you that the region is being taken for the glory of the Lord in that territory, God. I thank you that every lion thing is being moved aside in the name of Jesus. I thank you that territory is being taken for the glory of the Lord my God I feel you Lord in the name of Jesus oh God I thank you Father oh Father I thank you I thank you Father oh we praise you oh God in the name of Jesus that Lavernia, Texas even, will never be the same, oh God. And what is there shall be here, oh, tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you, Father God. I thank you for the covering. I thank you for the mantle on this house, oh God, that it shall be on, on every son and daughter, oh God. Upon this house, oh God, all those here, all those listening, all those connected, oh God. Father God, that they receive your power. They receive your embrace tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. And all the people said, Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise right there where you are. In the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. My God, my God. Such a beautiful presence. You're so beautiful tonight. Hallelujah handsome and beautiful god says that you're beautiful in his sight hallelujah thank you father hold oh, sharabakata on a saturday night amen you could have been anywhere but you're here tonight in the house of god amen hallelujah the best decision you ever made is to be in the presence of god amen hallelujah online we love you we bless you stay connected to remain protected tonight do not change that dial i'm talking to you Stay right there because God has something for you tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I feel it deep in my belly tonight. God is preparing something for that we shall persevere. That we shall advance forward tonight. Hallelujah. I feel freedom in the air. I feel liberty in the air. I shakata in the atmosphere. Oh I see a prosperous people. I see a victorious people. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Shatta so much that God wants to do tonight, I believe. Amen. It's such an honor to be here again with you. I love you. We bless you. We, it's such an honor to be here. Thank you, Apostle Mom, for allowing us to be here and serve tonight. Amen. Just give it up for the worship team. Amen. Such anointed people of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, leading us into victory. Amen. The presence of God. You know, I just feel this. I also want to just, you know, there's so much that happens behind the scenes. Amen. May I, mom, that there's so much that happens behind the scenes. I just feel it in my spirit. You know, let's give it up for the, for the media team. Let's give it up for, for the protocol team. Let's give it up 
for the, for the teachers. Let's give it up for the parking lot. Let's give it up for all those that I failed to mention, but everybody, the Bible says that a, a body has many members, hallelujah, and every one of you matter. Every one of you matter, and I, I thank you. We thank you, hallelujah, and God thanks you, hallelujah. God thanks you for your service. God thanks you for your giving, hallelujah, and it's a beautiful thing that we can serve the Lord, amen? My God, think about that. It's a beautiful thing to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. And we have to advance in our giving, as mom was saying. Hallelujah. And we have to advance in our serving unto the Lord. Just the same. This is part of your advancement. Because if you sit idle, oh, let me help you. If we sit idle, you get still and it gets stagnant. Okay? Hallelujah. We're going somewhere tonight. Amen? In the presence of God. God wants to take you into victory tonight. God wants you by his word, by his Holy Spirit, to take you into a place that, that you're running to, that you will get there quickly tonight in the name of Jesus, in the realm of the spirit. Glory to God. God's mo moving something tonight, I believe, out of the way in some of you. Hallelujah. Something that's been stuck. Something that's been stagnant. What has been held up? What has been clogged up? What has been holding fast? You've been pushing that thing. You've been pushing that thing. I'm telling you tonight, people of God, it's going to push out by the Spirit of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We shall progress. We shall advance. Say, say, I'm advancing. I'm not retreating. I'm advancing in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That we shall move forward. I decree, decree and declare that you shall move forward tonight in the name of Jesus. That you shall advance forward beyond your comprehension in the name of Jesus. Because that's how much God has for you. Amen? God has so much for his people. Let us have ears to hear and eyes to see tonight by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? Don't look at me. Look at Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at God. Amen? Hallelujah. I tell you, God's doing something. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Glory be to God. It says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Hallelujah. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are, what does it say? Ahead. Somebody say ahead. ahead. Say, I'm moving forward. I ain't going backwards. I'm moving forward. You got to get that step in, you know. You got to get that Holy Ghost step. You know what I'm saying? You got to tell the devil, get under my feet because I'm moving forward. Glory to God. You find yourself backing up, just say, I'm moving forward. It's okay. We've all been there. You feel like something's coming, coming hard on you. Life is hard. Uh-huh. Is that anybody? It's okay. But there's good news tonight for you. That you have power in your step. Power in your praise. Power in your worship. Power in your giving. Power in your faith. Hallelujah. That you can press through by the utterance of the Holy Ghost. That is inside each of you. Who would believe in the word of God. That you shall not be a stagnant water. That you shall not be a stagnant pool of people. But you shall be a rushing river of God's glory. That moves forward and fulfills the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not only in your life. But in the life of all those around you. Because God called you to prosper. God called you to rise up. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. God says that you're perfect in his image, that you are made beautiful. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. Hear me. You are beautifully 
and wonderfully made in the image of God. Now that should, you know, put some pep in your step. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you get to that place where you're like, I just can't get up no more. I just can't. How do I, Lord, I, I love you, Lord, but I just can't get up. Hey, I get up in the name of Jesus. And you push forward and you press on. Because this is what he said here. He said, I press forward. He said, those things which are ahead. In verse 14, he says, I love this. He says, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So that is so amazing that by the word of God, you can decree and declare, I shall press forward for the goal, for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus in my life, in your life. Hallelujah. And verse 15 says, therefore, let us as many as are mature. Somebody say mature. Okay, just making sure you heard. Hallelujah. Have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Mm. Okay, let me break that down. So if you don't understand, God will reveal it to you. You don't know how to pick your feet up in advance? God will reveal it to you. Hallelujah. Because it's not your burden. Hallelujah. You can give that to God and he will quickly come like a rushing wind. Amen. And he will reveal it to you. He will give the testimony to you. He will give the victory to you. He will bring the breakthrough to you. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Oh, verse 16 says, verse 16 says, uh, nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained. Say, it's already mine. Oh, my God. I hope you heard me. It's already mine. Put your hand on your heart and say, it's already mine. The prize is mine. Christ in me. It's already attained. It shall be in my life. Everything that God said for me. It's mine. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That is so good. And I want to go quickly to Luke uh, 4. Luke 4. Hallelujah. Verse 18. And here in Luke 4, 18, we have Jesus on the scene. Hallelujah. And they, they, they brought him and they prepared him. And they said, look, um, we want you to read something. So in verse, uh, let me go back up to verse 16 to set it up here. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. This is verse 16. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. What did he do? He stood up. Okay, I'm just checking. He stood up. He had to stand. You got to stand for Christ. You got to stand up in advance for Christ. Amen. And then as he stood up and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Verse 18. I love this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Hallelujah. Verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To, oh, my God. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good news. Amen. So he's called you. He's anointed you. He's appointed you. To preach the gospel. To proclaim the good news. Hallelujah. So if you're under the sound of my voice sitting there hearing the word of God, no matter where you are in your life, if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you said, I do, you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, you're called to proclaim the good news. You're called to tell your touch your neighbor and say, let me tell you something good. 
You're called to tell the man in the aisle at H-E-B in the grocery line, I see you looking down. Let me lift you up in the presence of my God. Hallelujah. Don't take one opportunity for granted, people of God. There is no time. Hear me well. There is no time to play games. We got to be real with God. And we got to be real with ourselves in the presence of God. Amen. Because there's not any more time to waste. Can I be real with you tonight? Amen. Because you have to be in a place. We, we should desire to be in a place by the word of God. As he just said. That he's already anointed you. He's already appointed you. Hallelujah. So why are we not moving in that thing? Why are we not moving in that promise? Hallelujah. Because when you persevere. Perseveres means you're victorious. That means you're not going to go back. You're going to go forward. Amen. Because there's people outside that need the good news of Jesus Christ. There's people out there in that dark world that need the light of Christ. And the God's going to do that through your life. Amen. I, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that everyone under the sound of my voice this week shall have an opportunity to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ with power and fire and glory in the name of Jesus. That the opportunities would just come before you. That you would be bold as a lion, the lion of Judah. That you would stand firm in your faith and say, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what he has for you today. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus. And in your obedience, God will step in and fill your voice. Fill your shoes. Fill your tank, if you will. In the name of Jesus. He'll put it in your belly. And then power and fire and glory comes forth. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I love going to H-E-B. Hallelujah. My wife and I, well, you know, I'm being real. We do that to go most of the time now, but. Because that stuff's pretty easy now. You just put the order in, tell it what you want. You drive in, put it in the back. I bless you in the name of Jesus, and off you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, you know, I always make sure I make it a point to bless uh, those young people that are serving. Amen? That, that, are, that are putting stuff in there. But, but listen, it's an, it's an opportunity. We have to see the marketplace of Jesus. We have to see the marketplace. Amen? Jesus said in, in, in the book of Acts, he said, in the, in the beautiful gate, right? When they say enter the beautiful gate, as they went into the marketplace, there was opportunity to minister. Amen? How many people pass the man at the gate every day? Every day. The Bible says that he was there every day. But he was lame. How many priests passed him up? Huh? How many priests passed him up? Think about that. Many passed him up, say, not me, not anymore. I'm not going to let anybody pass me up. By the Spirit of God, I shall catch it, and I shall move. I shall advance the Word of God in my life, in the life of others. Amen? So when we advance the Word of God, when we advance the Word of God in your life and through your life, and through, the, through the filter of the Holy Spirit, amen, it will advance everything else in your life. Because as you seek first the kingdom of God, amen, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and all other things be added unto you, right, with, with righteousness, the righteousness of God. Then as you do this, everything's got to flow. Everything's got to come to you. Amen. This is a house that is prosperous. This is a house that's blessed. It's co money comes to you in the name of Jesus. Favor comes to you in the name of Jesus. Because I know that our apostles have, have filled us with that word, have filled us with that revelation that said it's your testimony to have the goodness of God. Hallelujah. But we're going to advance a little further tonight. Amen. Praise be to God. We're going we're gonna to fight the fight. Hallelujah. Second Timothy says, I have fought the fight, the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. The main thing in that is, I kept the faith. Paul said, I kept the faith all his life. He said, I fought the fight. I pressed forward. I moved forward. It was not always easy. It stung sometimes. It, wasn't it was uncomfortable at times. But I stood up. 
Jesus stood up and he spoke. And he and the Bible says that people were marveled at what he spoke. People will be marveled at what you speak. Because it's the word of God. As you speak the word of God, they will be marveled at the presence of God. People say, often say, have you heard this? They go, how did you know that? Where did that come from? It ain't me. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just there eating my pancake at Cracker Barrel. Hallelujah. Trying to enjoy a nice breakfast bomb with my, my beautiful wife and my daughters. Amen. And sitting at the table and the Holy Ghost says, that one right there. I said, Ay, can I finish my pancake, Lord? He says, right now. Yes, sir. And then we just obey God. Amen. And then there's fire and there's power. There's revelation. There's healing and deliverance and restoration. Amen. You, I, I, I say that for the glory of God to help you because the, the, the marketplace is ready for you. The marketplace is ready for Jesus Christ to enter in like a rushing wind in that place. But he needs like more than ever a body of believers. He needs more than ever to have a people of a fiery feet people, a fiery feet people of faith that would stand and be bold and say, Lord's got my back. I'm jumping. Lord, I know you'll catch me. Because the Bible says that you will not be made a fool in the presence of God. Amen. I'm just checking. That's what my Bible says. Is that what yours says? Okay, making sure we got the same version. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because, you know, when you do this, there's power. You know? One day we were um, in a restaurant, another restaurant, and, and our young child goes, uh, we supposed to, Daddy was supposed to pray for the waiter. I said, okay. Hallelujah. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen? And we said, okay. We obey the Lord. And we said, sir, can we pray with you? And he says, why would you want to do that? And I, we said, because we love Jesus and he loves you. And he said, yeah, sure, why not? And then we just prayed with him right there in the restaurant. And the power of God came upon him. The Holy Spirit came upon him. And there was revelation, right? And, and there was healing. There was deliverance. And this man, y'all, glory to God, in the middle of a restaurant, crowded full of people, throw, he has a stack of plates. Because he's cleaning the tables. Right? Help me if I get this wrong. It's been a while. But he throws the, ta- the plates down, gets on his knees in the middle of the restaurant, raises his hands and says, Jesus, I love you. I receive you. He gave his life to Christ in the middle of the restaurant. He was a crazy man, got filled by the power of God in the middle of a restaurant. He didn't know what any of that meant, but he knew it, he, that was a greater, there was a greater power in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. He said, I don't care what it looks like. I said, go on, man. He just threw through the plates everywhere. It was like, bang. Everybody made a big old scene, you know. But he received Jesus. His life would never be the same. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to help you. Is that we got to be bold for the Lord. We got to be bold for God that he would move in great and mighty things in your life. Because some of you have prayed, said, Lord, Lord, I want to be used by you and mightily. I want to use, be used in a greater measure. I, I, I love you. I love you with all my heart. I love you with all my mind. All that I have, Lord. Lord, I want to, you, I want to be like Moses, you said. Lord, here I am, oh God. What God is saying to you today, go forth, advance the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. That should excite you in the presence of God that he wants you to advance. He said, what are you waiting for? I'm ready. What are you waiting for? God's already ready. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Glory be to God. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. If I could get verse 1 and 2 in the amplified version, people of God back there. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hebrews 6, chapter 1, in the Amplified, verse 1 and 2 in the Amplified. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So many testimonies that we're receiving. Amen. Glory to God. Testimonies are coming in. People are being healed, restored. Amen. In the presence of God all around the world. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing that God is doing. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to give it 
unshakable move forward. Praise be to God. Pull it up here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Verse 1. And the Amplified says, Hebrews 6, verse 1 says, Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teachings and doctrine of Christ, the Messiah. Advancing steadily toward the completeness and perfection that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works and, and, and dead formalism and of the faith by which you turn to God. Amen. Verse two. Verse two. Hallelujah. Thank you, people of God. With teachings about purifying the laying on of hands, the resurrection from the dead and eternal judgment and punishment. These are all matters of which you should have been fully aware long ago. Say, I'm aware. I'm aware. Say, I'm aware. I'm aware. I know by the word of God. Hallelujah. So there are certain basics and essentials that we must understand as believers. There are certain basics that we must understand as believers. To understand those principles, including the importance of what? Faith. We have to understand the importance of faith. It's the foundational building block. We need many things, but what we need more than anything is great faith. Not just, a, not just a little faith, because you're a big people. You're a fiery feet people. Amen? So God called you to have big faith. He called you to have mountain-moving faith. He called you to have part-the-sea faith. Hallelujah. He called you to have move-the-nations faith. Hallelujah. That you would speak to the sky and it should move. Hallelujah. Now join me in calling God for rain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let it rain, Lord. Let it rain in the natural and the spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know, once it rains in the spirit, the natural has to follow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's important in our faith. The foolish, foolishness of trying uh, to be saved by works, uh, you know, doesn't work. Trying to be saved by works, being, trying to be a good person. That's great. That's wonderful. But that will get you into heaven. Amen? Can I be real with you? So, so we have to be real with ourselves, as I said. It is not going to work to be saved by works. We have to understand. And the fact we have to understand the facts of resurrection and eternal life. There are facts that we must understand about the resurrected life. Amen? When we walk and understand the resurrected life, we live no longer in ourselves, but in Christ. And as we live in Christ and through Christ, all things become possible to those who believe. Amen. And so your life begins to take a, take a, a turn. Amen. So what seemed to be carnal in your past is no longer define you. Because now that you're born of the Spirit... Walking in the spirit, you're called to thrive. You're called to prosper. You're called to decree and declare. You're called to shake the mountains. You're called to part the seas. You're called to call angelic hosts in the name of Jesus. And then in the blink of an eye would come. Hallelujah. You're called to speak to the cancer and it should go in the name of Jesus. You're called to beat it on the head and say, get out in the name of Jesus. Go right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You got power in Jesus' name. It's a beautiful thing that we can call upon the name of Jesus. In the blink of an eye, he shall come. Before you can get Jesus off your lips, Jesus is on the scene. Because he never left to begin with. Hallelujah. You have to understand the revelation. He never left to begin with. He's always present. How do I know this? Because the word of God says so. And if the word of God says so, that settles it for me. Hallelujah. But you have to let your faith stand on the fundamental truth that God never leaves you nor forsakes you. And if God never leaves you nor forsakes you, people of God, then there's power constantly in you. There's power constantly with you. 
Deep, draw into deep. Amen. James 4, 8 says, draw closer to me. He said, draw closer to me and I'll draw closer to you. Closer meaning he's already nearby. Amen. Catch it. He said, I'll draw closer to you. So if I'm already here and I draw closer, I have to be nearby to come closer. Come right. Amen. So don't believe the lie for one moment that God has left you. Don't believe the lie for one moment that God is not for you. Some of you had that thought. Have you had that, that mentality maybe that said, well, I haven't seen anything move in my life. Maybe I've done something wrong. Maybe I've, maybe I've pushed God out of my life. Let me tell you something, people of God. God is a loving and faithful Lord. He does not go against his word. He said, I shall not leave you nor forsake you. Take it to the bank in the name of Jesus. That God is a mighty God. That he will be there with you. If you have a heart to ask for and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent in Jesus' name. There's something in my life that wasn't right. I confess it. I call it be so. It is what it is, God. Forgive me. And the Bible says that Jesus says, I remember your sins no more. Now come to me. Hallelujah. God wants to do something in your life. God wants to move things in your relationships even. In your relationship with him and relationships on this earth. Hallelujah. So the things that have been stuck won't be stuck anymore. Praise God. So it is important to, to become mature in our understanding. Hallelujah. We have to be mature in understanding and we need to move beyond but not away from. Uh, the basics to a more complete understanding of faith. Amen. It's important to understand the basics. Don't misunderstand me. But you're a mature people. Amen. You're a mature people of God. Because I know you are because you are faithful life church. Hallelujah. Because I know the meat that you're given in this house. The same meat that I get, you get. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And because you got some good meat, some good food. Some good feeding of, the, of, of your spirit man. Hallelujah. Your spirit man is fed well. Hallelujah. And if your spirit man is fed well, you're, you're, you're to thrive. Everything thrives in your life. We as mature Christians uh, and believers, I should say, we should be teaching others. Hallelujah. The basics. Because if you're mature in the things of God, teach your neighbor. Teach your neighbor. Don't hold it to yourself. My wife and I always say, you know, we say, I, you know, we say like this. We said, Lord, I wish I would have known way back then what I know now. Has that been anybody in here? I wish I would have known the good news of Jesus way back then. But nobody told me. I was surrounded by people of faith. I was surrounded by believers. But nobody said, Eric, let me sit down and have a conversation with you. Let me pray with you. Let me talk with you about Jesus. Now, don't misunderstand me. They're good people. Hallelujah. I love them. Bless them. But nobody stood in my and said, son, you, you, you need to get right. Let, let, let me talk to you because I love you. Let, let me show you what the Bible says for your life. Because it's a narrow gate. It's a narrow road. Life is short. Let me help you. You know, eternity, I, I saw this illustration. A man of God did this, and I love it. It's beautiful. Because what we do uh, on, this, on this earth, it's important work. That's why God put us here. Amen? For the glory of God. To exalt him, to magnify him, to expand the kingdom of God. So if you take a rope, amen, and, and you take a rope, and then on the end you put, you know, say about four inches, you paint that thing red. Amen? And then the rest of the rope is just there. So that little four inches on that rope, that's your life on this earth. And the rest of that is eternity. So what you do in your life with the four inches of that rope that is massive and long matters to God. It's important that you understand the responsibility that you possess in God to advance the kingdom of God, to Thrive in your life. It's important to understand what you do in the four inches on that rope. Does that make sense? Because it's what you decide. It's the decision. It's the decisions that you make. 
in that four inches that can determine eternity. You say, man of God, I'm already a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. But how tragic would it be that if we didn't follow the word of God, hallelujah, and we misstepped some things, so because we did not completely die to self and let us be ruled and reigned by the spirit of God. And then on that day, Jesus, the, 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 you're, you're coming to the gates of heaven. He says, depart from me. I never knew you. How tragic would that be? So we must live our life pleasing unto God and to the things of God because he is a loving and faithful God. Not because we have to, because we get to. Because we get to. Because it's an opportunity to see the good things of Jesus Christ. The good things to see the, the open heavens on the earth. I mean, he said, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when we are in, in worship, amen, when the woman, the woman and men of God and the people of God are leading us in worship, hallelujah, the heavens are opening. They're stepping in obedience. The Bible says portals of heaven shall open in the presence of God as we lead and advance forward the people of God into victory. Hallelujah. He said there didn't need to be many. There just needed to be a few that would worship the Lord. And in the few worshiping the Lord, the enemy would be defeated. Hallelujah. And so as you advance in your worship, as you advance in your faith, as you advance in all the things that God has called you to do, the enemy shall be defeated. The Bible says, resist the devil and he shall flee. Amen. And so that means everything that's pulling you back from God, resist it and get it behind me. Satan, get behind me. If it's pulling you away from God, it's pulling you away from the word of God. If it's pulling you away from the power you better adjust some things in your life. Ekata, hear me by the Spirit of God. You got to move things out of the way. <laughs> because you're, you're, God called you to be a clear channel. God called you to be a clear vessel for the Holy Ghost. To move and flow and function with power and fire and glory. He didn't call you to question everything. He said, say, yes, Lord. So when he called Peter in that boat that day and he said, come follow me. Did Peter hesitate? He said, let's go. We got to be the people that say, let's go. Let's go, God. 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 And as we say, let's go, God. You know what? That's beautiful about that because now you're, your mind's not thinking about it. Your spirit, man, is leaping at the presence of God. Spirit unto spirit. Amen. And so as we leap out, our spirit, man, leaps out into the presence of God, then you let your flesh behind you. So your spirit moves forward. I say, I say to the Lord daily, I say, Lord, just my flesh burn in the name of Jesus. Let my flesh burn in the name of Jesus. That I would be f available to you, God. To have your way. That you would be seen from afar, God. Because it's not about me, God. It's all about you. Hallelujah. As I said before, even in... Even as your head is down on your pillow at night asleep, you know. I mean, I like to sleep. Does anybody here like to sleep? It's okay. That's not a sin. It's okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said rest. <laughs> he said you rest by still waters. Amen. Green pastures, still waters. Hallelujah. But even in my rest, my spirit man leaps. Because the spirit of the Lord never sleeps. Amen. So you can be a husband and wife, you know, you can be there in your bed together because you prayed together. Pray together before you go to bed. Let me help you. Hallelujah. Turn Netflix off and say, let's Holy Ghost. Let's <laughs> I promise you the reviews are amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reviews of Jesus Christ are amazing. Last time I checked, he is the best-selling author. Hallelujah. That's ever been known. 
So you're checking the reviews of the Netflix once you check the reviews of Jesus Christ. And you won't be disappointed. Hallelujah. Get into the presence of God as a people of God. Get in the presence of God. Maybe, maybe you're not married. Maybe you're single. Pray, amen. But prepare your spirit, man. For that man, for that woman that's coming in your life. Prepare what's in you. Prepare, cultivate the soil. Cultivate the, the spirit man that God that has, has called for you to have. So that way when God brings him or her, whatever that may be, hallelujah. Well, you know what I'm saying? If it's a man, if it's a woman, let me clarify. Hallelujah. Whew, okay. This is the world. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We can, see, we can't even talk like that no more. We got to say, we got to clarify the man and the woman, okay? Lord Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all know what I meant. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. But it's important work that as our spirit man is prepared and cultivated, the balm of Gilead, the word of God, the more that you put the word in you, the more will flow out of you. Amen. Let me remind you of an instruction that the, the apostle of this house gave. He said, uh, she, the uh, apostle mom said, read the word of God every day. Amen. I just want to remind you. Uh-oh. No, no. Hallelujah. Okay. Just check it. But that was the instruction, right? Because if you didn't do it, do it. Right? Because it's to bless you. It's that for you to thrive, for you to prosper, for you to go further in the things of God. So, you know, it's a beautiful thing when you sit, when even in your sleep, the spirit man is still moving. You know, I love it when I, I'm asleep and my, I wake up and I'm awoken to my wife. On my belly, fire. And I'm like, woo, glory, hallelujah. She out again. And vice versa. I said, in the morning, I said, oh, that was good last night. <laughs> Holy Ghost. The Lord did some things. Hallelujah. I said, how'd you sleep? She said, oh, amazing. I said, I know. <laughs> the Lord is good. He was speaking last night. She said, I thought that was a dream. I said, that wasn't a dream. That was you by the Spirit of God. And vice versa. That's what God called it to be. That's what God called you to do. He said, "Be pray without ceasing. Amen? And when you're feeding that thing, or when you're feeding your, the, the spirit man, you're feeding that and you're saying, I feed the word of God, I receive the word of God, I pray by the spirit. You're feeding, feeding, and you're filling up. Amen. That your cup would overflow. That it pours into your children. That it pours into your, into, into your friends. It pours into your workplace. It pours into your colleagues. It pours, it pours, it pours, it pours. Because you constantly are pouring in. Amen. Hallelujah. And the more you pour in, the more will pour out. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray this helps you today in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 5, verse Hebrews 5, verse 12. Hebrews 5, verse 12 in the New King James. Hallelujah. Hebrews 5, verse 12. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 5, verse 12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. Verse 14, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Say, I discern good and evil because I'm mature. I'm ready for the meat because it's in my life, the word of God. Amen? So we must train our conscious, consciousness, our senses, our minds our bodies to distinguish between good and evil. You've got to check yourself in the presence of God. And you've got to tell some things, get in line or get out. Get in line or get out in many capacities. Amen? Can you recognize temptation before it controls you? <laughs> Ask yourself, ask yourself that quick. Can I recognize temptation before it gets me? Amen. I pray, I pray yes. 
Amen. By the spirit of the Lord, whether that be indulgence in, 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 in food, whether that be, you know, uh, you know, too much uh, uh, Netflix or TV or whatever it is. Again, if it's if it's not calling you in closer into the things of God, if it's not calling you into the essence and the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, if it's not building you up in the presence of God, if it's not filling you and empowering you by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus, if you don't see yourself rising as a giant of faith, you might want to look through the lens of Christ Jesus and say, Holy Ghost, examine me. Let it reveal unto me. Convict me, O God, what I need to toss out of my life in the name of Jesus so that I would advance forward in what you've called me to advance Amen. hallelujah that as you advance in the things of God then there would be victory in your life Amen. then the byproduct of your obedience is victory and faith faith is a byproduct of your obedience because if you're obedient to the word of God if you're obedient to the things of God if you're obedient to the headship to the word that comes through your house amen your life will prosper amen because it's called to walk through and bust down barriers and bust down walls. You're a mountain shaker. Amen? It's under your feet. There's nothing. Luke 137. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. You have to see yourself, people of God, the way God sees you. Amen. You have to see through the lens of Christ. You have to see through the lens of the Holy Spirit that the way he sees you. I said last week, look in the mirror. Amen. How many of you did that? You went home, looked in the mirror, made a declaration over yourself. Hallelujah. I know the house shook. Hallelujah. Because there's power in the finger of God. Amen. Because when you decree and declare a thing in your life, when you say, I am beautifully and wonderfully made, I am made in the image of God, and I know who I am in Christ, everything that's contrary to the word of God has to fall off. Amen? It has to go. Praise be to God. Let's jump back into here. Hebrews 9.14 to help you. It says now, Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? It's what I just said. We got to work it through the filter of the Holy Spirit. Right. So that way we would, we would resist the devil and he should flee and that we would have a clear conscience in the things of God so that we would prosper. Say, I'm prospering. I'm going further. I'm going to be I'm going to be so good when I leave here today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, you're going to prosper. You're going to go higher. You, you thought you were Going high when you got here, when you walk out, people of God, hear me. You're going to walk up. You're going to fly high in the spirit. Because God told me so, Pastor Mom. He said, they're going to fly high. They're going to go further. Because what God is doing in Faith for Life Church by the Spirit of the Lord, what God is doing not just here in this hour, but what he's doing on the land, what he's doing in the nations, what he's, where he's taking our headships, our apostle uh, Nathan and Cindy Sloan, where he's taking all the believers, all the leaders, where he's taking our worship leaders, where he's taking our teams. You have to see the hand of God. You have to see what God is doing. Hallelujah. And then you've got to get behind that thing and push. Push, push your faith. Let your faith push, pull. Let it pull and push that you would move everything forward. Amen. He gives you incredible strength. Amen. The, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It says the strength of the Lord is upon me. The wisdom of the Lord is upon me. So again, he gives you everything that you need. We, had a, we were driving down the road one day. In, uh, uh, in Baytown there, and there's a, a gentleman, a, a car stalled, a truck stalled on the middle of the road, right? And, and I'm like, and it was just like, it was an older gentleman, I think it was. And I said, and it's, I don't know if y'all know, it's a busy thoroughfare, right? There's a lot of people. And nobody was stopping to help this little man. Car was stuck, and he's back there trying to push the truck. And I, I was like, what in the world? I said, pull over, love. We're going we're gonna to help this man. I said, well, surely some people are going to pull over. They're going to help, right? Nope. So I get out. And I say, I got behind that truck. I said, sir, we're going to get this moved in the name of Jesus. 
He said, okay. Yes, by the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The strength of the Lord is upon me. Let it go, God. Up a hill, I'm just saying. In the AHA parking lot. <laughs> See, God will use you in many ways to witness. But I got to hold that little man's hand and say, the Lord loves you. The Lord loves you. But see, he couldn't see it. He says, really? Everything's wrong in my life. Everything's breaking in my life. Look at my truck. Stalled in the middle of the road. And nobody would help me. I said, that's not true, sir. That's not true. That is not true. I said, that's a lie. Don't believe it for a second. I said, because God sent a man on Garth Road because I was supposed to go left, but I went right. We were supposed to go the other way, but for some reason we came this way. I didn't know that, that you were going to be here, but God knew you were here. God heard, heard your cry. God heard your plea. Because the spirit of God inside of me said, get out of the truck and help that man. That he would see me. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? We got to see the opportunities that God gives us in the marketplace to advance the kingdom of God, to advance the power and the love of Christ in the world. Amen. Because it's a dark place out there, but it's full of light in Christ. Amen. Because the darkness has to flee in the presence of light. Hallelujah. We got to be steadfast. Amen. So you may know Christ, and you may, you may still be trying to make yourself good enough for God, right? And you're like, okay, I'm not good enough yet. That devil is a liar. The moment you said I do, you're good enough. The moment that he said, I know the plans I have for you, the plans for you to prosper for a hope in the future, that was good enough. He says, I know the number of hairs on your head. God said, you're good enough. And let me take it further. You're not just good enough. You are, he said, you are clothed in robes of righteousness, people of God. He said, you are beautifully and wonderfully made, people of God. He said that you shall speak to the mountains and they shall move. He said that you will raise, speak to the dead and they shall raise. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, you shall speak and cast out devils in my name and they shall flee and never return. Hear me. My God. Don't think that you have to be a certain position to fulfill the word of God in your life out there. God called you from day one. I've seen many people at the moment of conversion, at the moment of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, at the moment of receiving Jesus Christ. God used those people and, and young people even powerfully and mightily. Laying hand in the sick's recovering. I've seen it with my eyes. Glory to God. Young people coming up out of the glory for the first time. Fire. Man, people coming out of their wheelchairs, paralyzed, coming out. He didn't go to no, you know, program. <laughs> he didn't go to no series. He got filled by the Holy Ghost. He got approved by Jesus Christ. He said, you're beautifully and wonderfully made, young man. Get up, lay your hands on that man in that chair, and he will rise up. Because it's not you, it's me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You got to persevere. You got to move forward in the things of God. Amen. Ver, uh, verse 3 says, verse 3 and, and uh, Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6, verse 3. Hallelujah. And this we will do if God permits. And the Amplified, I love how the Amplified says, if indeed God permits, we will now proceed to advance teaching. You're going to exceed, you're going to advance to advance teaching. Christians and believers would need to move beyond the basics, as I said, to a faith of understanding of Christ as the perfect high priest and fulfillment of all the prophecies. We simply need to depend on Christ and live effectively in him. Somebody say effectively. 
Okay, hear me. Effectively. So you got to live effectively in Christ. Because he gave you, he gave you every tool. He gave you every instrument that you need to be effective in Christ. Number one, faith. Obedience in the things of God. And by the word of God. And, and, and really, to be effective, you got to receive the word of God completely. Just devour this thing. You got to devour the word of God. You, I can't get enough of it. Because especially when I, I love being uh, the opportunity to minister because it draws me closer unto God in a deeper level. Right? I mean, not that you don't go there before, but now there's a different level of, of hunger, right? There's a different, there's a responsibility. I promise you, people of God, when I come here before you and it's an honor, I don't take it lightly because I don't take it lightly before the Lord because I want to be pleasing unto God, but I also want to be a blessing unto God's people. Amen. And so to be a blessing unto God's people, I've got to be yielded to the spirit of God. Just like you have to be yielded to the spirit of God to be effective with God in, in, in your life. You have to be yielded to things that God has called you to yield to so you can be effective in Christ outside. So you can be effective in your house, in your family, in your ministry, in your marriage, in your children. You've got to be effective in the things of Christ. He didn't call you to hap haphazard. He didn't call you to just be mediocre. He called you to thrive. He called you to prosper. Amen? Amen? To be effective. I love the word effective because that means to me he wants you to be whole. He wants you 100% for the glory of God. He wants you to be mightily, move mightily in the things of God. Amen? Verse 4 says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. And verse 5 says, and have tasted the good word of God. Somebody say the good word. Good word. Woo! I love it. It's like, it's like honey on my lips, Maswa. I've tasted the good word. The word is so good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Y'all had that steak, and you're like, woo, that was so good. Yeah. That steak was, come on, it's okay. I see you, men of God. That man of God said, fire! <laughs> He said, well done, hallelujah, medium, hallelujah. But you said it's so good because there's things in life that we say it's so good. I got to have more of it. I crave it. I need more of that in my life. Well, the thing you should crave the most is the Holy Ghost. The thing you should crave the most is the word of God. That as you devour the word of God, as you devour the things of God, that everything else is secondary. So that way you are effective. The people, of, the people of God in the Bible, amen? So the, the Peter, the Paul, right? The Pauls of the world, right? So they were effective, amen? Everybody agree? They were effective in the gospel. They were effective in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as he ascended into heaven, he said, it's better that I go, that I send my, my, uh, a teacher, a helper, an advocate, and Holy Spirit, that you would do more even than I. So he said, to all those who would believe. And so the word of God is not just for one class of people. The word of God is not just for one breed of, uh, for one tribe. The word of God is for all who would believe. Amen? The word of God is for all who would believe. That is a false statement to say, it, you have to believe in this, you have to believe in that. God said, believe in me. Believe in me. Confess me as your Lord and Savior. Have a relationship with me. That's all God wants is a relationship with you. He wants to know you intimately. He wants to know you with great compassion, the compassion of Jesus Christ on your life. He wants you to draw. Again, James 4, draw closer to me. I'll draw closer to you. As you gain intimacy with the Holy Spirit, as you are in communion with the things of God, everything in your life just, just whoo, you're like, whoo, that is so good. Hallelujah. It becomes so good, people of God. I remember the, when I encountered the, the Spirit of God for the first time, I came up out of the glory, off of the, pew, the, the, the pews, you know, had them in my back. <laughs> it was hard. And I, and I remember the Lord saying, Son, never, ever stop loving me. I heard it clear as day. He said, never stop loving me. 
I said, Lord, I'll, I'll never stop loving you all the days of my life. Because what you've put in me is something that I can never express in words, oh God. What you have done in my life, God, is something that I cannot express in words. But I will express it and be effective for you, God. My wife and I, we said, Lord, we're going to be effective for you, Lord. We're going to follow you. We're going we're gonna to stand on the word of God. We're going to follow and receive what you would have for us. We receive the correction of the Holy Spirit. We receive the discipline of the Holy Spirit. And that's important because sometimes the people of God don't want the whooping. Can I be real? It's okay. Take the whooping. It makes you better. What's the Bible say for your children? It says, train up a child in the way they should go, and that's the way they should go. So when you let God train you up in the way you should go, that's the way you will go. In order to allow him to train you up, you might need a whooping or two by the Spirit of God. Amen? That's the best way I can describe it to you. I'm plain. I'm, I'm just, I'm real, right? It's probably a more fancy word, but I'm going to go with whooping, okay? Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Because I think everybody in this house said, I'm going to whoop you. Huh? Is that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to whoop you if you don't get right. I'm going to whoop you if you don't get in line. I'm going to whoop you if you disrespect. I'm going to whoop you. I'm going to take care of you because it's love. I know when I, if, when, when I correct my children, I say, when there has to be correction, I say, I love you. Because I love you. I make sure they know I love you. Because I love you. I want you to raise right. I want to train you right. I want you to grow up correctly. You may not like it, but I love you. Amen. Because I'm responsible. Right? You're responsible for your actions before the Lord. Amen. Don't take it lightly that you're going to, you know, like, well, I'll get a free pass. Well, you asking God, why is this working? Why is this broke? Why is this taking so long? God said, well, because you ain't got on the road I told you to get on. You taking another path, not the path I told you to get on. Your foot's on it, but your other foot's off of it. Hallelujah. I know this is a hard, it's a hard statement, but it's the truth. Because I want to help you. I know this. I know not everybody amens and jumps something down on that. Hallelujah. But it's, it's the truth. I want you to, by the Spirit of God, catch it that we have to be in a, we have to be very disciplined in this season. We have to be very disciplined people of God in the things of God so we can advance forward because he has called you to do great things. He has called you to advance forward. He has called you to break, to break loose and break free. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to advance forward. And John, and John 4, uh, verse 10, Jesus was uh, speaking to the Samaritan woman. He said, and we all know this verse in verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you uh, living water. So you got to know who's talking to you. You got to see God talking to you. You got to see the you got to see Jesus talking to you. You got to saw you got to see right now don't look at me, look at Jesus, right? So you got to see Jesus talking to you in your life. You got to see Jesus talking to you. You got to be vigilant to see Jesus talking to you. That because if you saw Jesus walk up to you and he told you to do this, yes sir, and you do it. Right? You're quick to do it because you know that that the authority that the master said so. But you have to be attentive by the Spirit of God because I assure you, people of God, that every single day of your life, there is an instruction of God in your life. There is an instruction that God is giving, but you have, have to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Be sealed in the Holy Spirit and be well tuned into the things of God that you would be effective for the work of the gospel. Amen? So that you would know what's happening around you. Amen? All right, back to Hebrews 6, verse 7. It says, For the earth... Uh, which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated. Somebody say cultivated. Cultivate me, Lord. Hallelujah. I love that word. Cultivated receives blessings from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near 
to being cursed, whose end is it to be burned. So land that produces good fruit receives loving care. Amen? But land that produces thistles and briars and, 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 and sharp things, th those things have to be burned off. Right? They have to be burned off so the farmer can start all over again. Because that's not the way it was intended. It was intended to be fruitful. It was intended to prosper. But somewhere along the way, somebody wasn't effective in managing the land. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Somewhere along the way, somebody wasn't effective in preparing the land. And caring for the soil. And watering what was already planted. Because the seed was already planted. The seed was planted. The word is good, but it was intended to. It wasn't watered. It wasn't cultivated. And so out of that lack of obedience, out of that lack of effectiveness, came up a sticky thing. A sticky thing came up out of a lack of obedience. And so then you have to start over. But glory to God, thank God for Jesus Christ, that we can simply say, Lord Jesus, forgive me, for I've fallen short of your glory. I repent in the name of Jesus, and I, today I commit to you, God, to plow, to sow, to be effective in Jesus' name. So thank God tonight. You can come to the altar of God. You can enter the Holy of Holies and say, Lord, I want to be effective for you. I want to be effective for you. And you can get right with God. You can be right with God. You can get back in line. If you're not sure, you get back into a place that you can be effective for the glory of God. And then you'll see this house fly high like you've never seen before. Because when we are walking in unison, in one accord, and in one spirit, my God. A mighty army of believers together. Hand in hand. I don't give the enemy no credit, but let me show you something. I, I could not help it the other day. Uh, you know, on this, you see the stuff where these, these armies around the world and these massive armies, there's tens and thousands, I don't know how many, but they're all in unison. They all one accord. They walk in power. Now, now, I want you to see this. Picture this. You see this massive army coming at you. There's a, there's a wall of people, a wall of people coming at you. I mean, standing together in unison, in one accord. You're going to get smacked down if you try to stand right in front of them. So, so glory to God that we have the opportunity, people of God, as a body of believers to be in one accord, says the word of God, to be effective for the gospel of Jesus Christ. If this house, because we're flying higher, we're in union in Jesus' name, but as you in your house, as you in your marriage, as you in your children, as you in your workplace, as you in your ministry, as you in all the things of God, that you call into the things of God and say, Lord, let me be effective in this. Let me be effective in that. Oh God, show me where I'm missing it, even if it, I don't understand it, God. That I would be unshakable, that I would be immovable, that I would advance forward into victory and everything. Amen? Amen. A force to be reckoned with. Amen? Resist the devil and he shall flee. Let me tell you. See that army of mighty, fiery feet, people of God, big of faith, coming at him. That devil running, I promise you, in the name of Jesus. Get out of my house. Get out of my territory. Get out of my land in the name of Jesus. You got to be a people of God that goes on your street, goes on your neighborhood, goes in your community and says, this is mine for the glory of God. This is God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is in this place. The kingdom of God is in this, hand, in this land, this territory, this business, what have you. 
And say, it's a done thing in the name of Jesus. And every day you come in and you say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that I am, the, I am that I am in Jesus' name. God says that I am mighty. God said I'm, I am clothed in robes of righteousness. God said I'm the head and not the tail. And if I'm all those things because I am, because he said that I am, I can say to the territory. I can speak to the air. I can speak to the land. I can speak to every diabolical thing and tell it to get out. In the name of Jesus. And tell that thing to go. Tell every devil to fall on its face. Tell it to get out of your house. Get out of your marriage. Get out of your family. Get out of your kids in Jesus' name. If, if everybody that believed in Jesus Christ, really, let's be real, did that every single day. Go to your child's school. With wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Something going wrong in there? Say, that's okay. We're going to take care of it. We're going to take care of it by the Spirit of God. Because that's who I called to be. That's who you're called to be. Hallelujah. Don't wait on the world to fix it for you. Don't wait on the systems to fix it for you. Call on God. Because God will come like a rushing wind. He will call an axe anointing on your life to come in. And what you thought was impossible will be possible. You have to hear me, people of God. There's nothing that God won't do. Amen? You know, we had things going on in this state, in this nation, and source were praying and praying and things about things. I get a call, uh, not you know, a couple, well, it's probably months ago now, a couple months ago, out of the blue, this man of God calls me, y'all. He calls me up and he says, hey, man of God, um, the, the Lord spoke and he said that you're to go with me to go pray with govern the governor of texas to go and pray we received an invitation to go pray for the state of texas in the governor's office i said what Come on. Come on. how does that happen but god Amen. but god Amen. because i'm trying to help you when you stand on the word of god and say, and you see yourself the way God sees you, that you are mighty, you are general, you're standing tall, you're, you're a giant in faith in the name of Jesus, that you can shake the mountains. We don't just say it to haphazardly say it. Truly, you can say, mountain, get out of the way. And it's got to get out of the way. BIP, amen. I prayed for my taxes. Hallelujah. I prayed for my taxes. I said, Lord, my taxes got to go down. Glory to God. I was praying for that months ago. Anybody in here paid for your taxes? I know the Bible says give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to what God is God. Amen. But I said, Lord, the taxes is too, too, too much. Hallelujah. And then he let me go inside the place where they decide that thing. So I said, I'm going to go in this room real quick. One second. Hallelujah. Fire in the name of Jesus. My taxes shall go down. They shall cut in Jesus name. And I pray for all my brothers. I pray for all my sisters around the state that they shall taxes shall be cut in the name of Jesus. I don't know if you saw the news lately. Your taxes are cut in the name of Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't heard that yet? Hallelujah. Check the news. Hallelujah. There's some, there's some benefits coming your way. Hallelujah. There's some benefits coming your way. It's law now in the name of Jesus. But it, it birthed in the spirit. Hallelujah. You got to hear the word of God. You got to see the things of God. Hallelujah. Look at that. I just caught that revelation. Out of faith for life, Apostle Mom, the state was moved. Out of faith for life, we have to see through the eyes of Christ. Out of a fiery feet, people of faith, nations are moved, says the word of God. Amen. The whole territory is being moved. I see you, Lord. God's doing something. Hallelujah. We have to see through the eyes of Christ. Verse 11 says, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. Hope and faith in God keeps the believer from feeling dull. Keeps us from getting dull and becoming bored 
Like an athlete, we must train hard and well. If you're, if you're trying, if you're on a journey to, to be healthy and to, and to be effective for the things of God, you've got to be persistent, right? You've got to be effective and disciplined in those things to see the results. You want to see results, you've got to be effective. You want to you see results, you've got to be effective. I'm talking to myself too. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Remembering what reward lies ahead. He said, there's a great reward for you. Hallelujah. That's like that. When I see that word, I always think of this. Uh, uh, can I be just be me, right? Amen. So I always think of the, you know, the, 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 the greyhounds on the, on the track. And if you know how they make them race, they have the little carrot or whatever that's going on the, on the motor around it. And they just, I mean, they're going at it, but they're just trying to get that rabbit or the carrot or whatever it is, like carrot on a stick or what have you. <laughs> but they got great speed with one intended target, and they're trying to get that rabbit, right? They know what the prize is. They know what the reward is. But you and I have a promise by the word of God. There's a great reward that God promises for you and I, that we shall walk the walk, that we shall fight the fight to win the race, to receive an inheritance for the glory of God, to receive an inheritance in the kingdom for eternity. That's worth, that's worth running after. That's worth the endurance of Jesus. That's worth the endurance of, 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 of fasting and praying. That's worth getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's worth at the midnight hour getting on the wall. That is worth being the watchman on the wall to get up in the, in the noon day, in the night hour, or whenever it may be that God calls you to get up and to just seek the Lord and get, get downloads from heaven. Hallelujah. Not just for your life, but for others. Amen. There's been many times in prayer, right? The Lord will show me. He'll, he'll, say, he'll, he'll show my wife and I, this is going to happen today. This person's going to come in your life. This person's going to walk about, or you're going to see this, you're going to see that. And we'll say, yes, Lord. And then there's anticipation. There's an anticipation that what God said, if God said it, that settles it. That we're going to be effective for the gospel. Amen? That, that you will be effective in the gospel. And then those things come to pass. Those things come because now we're attentive. Right, or like our radars, like boop, boop. Right? Like, where they at, Lord? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? So every man in a blue shirt got prayer that day. Hallelujah! <laughs> God knows how to make the gospel spread. Hallelujah! He said, "Well, that wasn't the one, but go ahead anyway," because <laughs> it was for all believers. Amen. For all who would believe. Amen. So you got to understand. To go in that place with God. To go press toward the prize. Amen. We get to press forward into the things of God. Verse 13 says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He, he obtained the promise, y'all. Abraham waited patiently. It was 25 years from the time God promised him a son. Amen? To Isaac's birth. So our trials, our temptations, or what have you, or because they are, they're, they're so intense, they seem to last an eternity. But the Bible, but both the Bible and testimony of mature believers, amen? Mature believers encourage us to wait for God's timing. Trust God. That settles it. God says it. That's what it is. Amen. If he said it, I'm going to do it. I, he's going to do it. And just hold on. Hold on. Stand, stand fast. Immovable. Not shakable. See your house. See your promise. See your feeling. See your healing. See your or oh, whatever it is that you're believing God for, whatever God has said to you in response to your faith, it shall be in your life. Then hold on to it and it'll come. Hallelujah. Your kids have asked you for stuff, right? And they said, Mom, Dad, I want this, I want that, right? And you said, okay, I'll give it to you. And then they, but, but then you're like, you know, you're not ready for that yet. When it's the right time, I'll give it to you. Because if I give it to you too early, you're going to mess it up. I already know you. I already know your character. I already know. 
I already know. Go look at your room and look at the other stuff that I got you that was really nice, young man. That $800 toy you had to have that's broke on five 15 pieces, you weren't ready for it. That was my fault. Forgive me. I gave it to you too early. And more importantly, I say, Lord, forgive me. I didn't seek you. I didn't seek you, God, and ask, is, this, is my child ready for this yet? Is this the right time for this or that yet? Lord, I don't want to move unless you say move. I want, to, I, want, I want to stand still until you say to step. Amen? So you got to stand firm in the faith, stand firm in your faith that God would order your steps because that's the word of God. He says he prepares a place for you. He goes before you. Amen? So your steps are ordered by the Lord. So if your steps are ordered by the Lord, don't shouldn't you ask him what step you need to take? Is that not right? Hallelujah. That you would, that you would go higher in all these things. Amen? Hallelujah. Verse 18 says that, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. And verse 19 says, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. So God's two unchangeable realities, immutable things. Uh, are his own nature and his own promise. Those are unshakable. His own nature and his own promise are unchangeable. His character is not going to change. Amen? God embodies all truth, and therefore he cannot lie. Because God is truth. You can be secure in his promises. Amen? You don't need to wonder if he will change his plans. Is God going to change his plans? I know he told me. But is it, maybe he changed his mind because I ain't seen it yet. No, if God said it, that settles it. Stay faithful to God. He'll stay faithful to you. Hallelujah. He rewards his children. He says in his word, he rewards his children. Amen. I tell my children, I said, you want that? You got, there's some things you got to do. I love you. But unless you do, and she's watching, I love you, Mija. I love you. But if you got to do the things you got to do, because there's an order in my house. There's an order. I said, there's an order in my house. Unless there's an order in my house, I will not allow chaos to run amiss. I will not allow it. Just like in your life, you don't need to allow chaos. You don't need to allow those things. You say, get under my feet. There shall be order in my life. I will be effective for Jesus Christ. My life will be effective for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you're, you're decreeing, you're declaring, and you're taking a position. You're taking a stand in your faith and saying, this is what my life will look like. Because God said so. Amen. So don't look at your situation. Don't look at your circumstance. Go to the word of God and see what God says for your situation. Go to the spirit of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you and to lift you and to take you and to push you into the things of God. Amen. It's beautiful, really. When you pray to God and you ask God, God will do it. He said, ask and you shall receive. He said, you have not because you ask not. You say, well, maybe God doesn't want to be bothered with that. Maybe God doesn't want to be hindered because it's too small. There's nothing too small for the Lord. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. There's nothing that's insignificant for God in your life. Because if he knows every number, every hair on your head, he knows what you need. He knows the desires of your heart. He just wants you to knock so he can answer. He wants you to show up so he can blow you away in the name of Jesus. He wants you to come to the altar of God. He wants you to come to the Holy of Holies. He wants you to come into his presence. He wants you to he wants you to come so he can flow. You say, things have been difficult in my life, man. I'm glad you just don't understand. Look, I understand things are hard. I get that. I mean, no disrespect. I understand. But what I'm telling you as a man of God is that there's nothing that's too hard for God. There's nothing that God can't deal with. There's nothing that's impossible. 
Nothing. Nada. That's all you get in Spanish tonight. By the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. He'll raise the dead. Come on. He'll raise the dead. Heal the sick. Heal the brokenhearted. What did we say as we begin tonight? He said that, I was, that you were anointed to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. That you were anointed and appointed to proclaim, to heal the brokenhearted. To, to reclaim and, and captivate the, the lost so they shall be saved. Amen. So you're going to be mature in your faith. You're going to go into a place with God. Amen. You're going to go higher in the things of God. You're going to see yourself in a new perspective. Because when you see yourself from a diff- from through this perspective of the, of the Holy Spirit, you ha- when you see yourself, then everything has to activate. It has to. It has to. It's a, it, it's a rule. It's a law. Because it, 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 God said so. He said if you can see the... If you can see the way I see you, you'll be amazed. Because that's how God sees you. Don't look at what, you, what, it, what the natural says. Don't look at your circumstance, but look at who you are in Christ. And God will pull you out of that pit. Come on, Joseph. He'll take you out of that hole, and he'll put you into a land. He will put you and prosper you like you've never seen before. One minute you in a hole, baby, and the next minute you prospering in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. One minute you in the OR, and the next minute you thriving. Hallelujah. Try to put me in the operating room. The devil is a liar. Say, we got to operate on you, going to die. I said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I shall live and not die in Jesus' name. I know what you said. I understand what the report said. I know you saw blood in my body and I'm bleeding right now. And I know what's going like this. And you said, I got to operate on you in the next 30 minutes or you can die. I said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I know who I am in Christ. Let me seek my God. Let me take a moment with my God. Let me call the woman of God and pray. And as we pray, heaven will move. Heaven will respond. Heaven will do it in Jesus' name. And then heaven moved. Heaven responded. Hallelujah. I woke up in the morning, you know, and said, what happened? What happened? And they said, you don't know. I said, no. I said, 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 how'd the surgery go? They said, what surgery? You didn't need surgery because we did one more scan, one more check, and there was no blood. There was nothing in your body. Everything was gone in the name of Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord. You see what I'm saying is that you, know, you got to pull on heaven. You got to pull by your faith with effective faith to say, it shall be mine. And sometimes, yeah, you got to push a little harder. Sometimes you got to push a little harder. And sometimes you're pushing for a while. But push that thing through, and it'll birth through the canal in Jesus' name. What was stuck, be unstuck in the name of Jesus. I hope you hear me by the word of God. What was stuck in your life shall no longer be stuck in Jesus' name. Because when you push forward, when you push forward with great faith, everything moves. Hallelujah. You got to see through the lens of Christ. You got to see through the eyes of Christ that every light will pass aside every darkness. Amen. That would have been a dark thing, right? You know, we got the, I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, we're sitting in our house, praising God. I think we were doing actually that. I came home from work. We're like, hallelujah. And then phew, this thing comes on like, what the world? I was like, I rebuke that Jesus' name. And then we're in the operating room and all this stuff going on, right? But I praise God. I said, Lord, I praise you. I love you. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We, matter of fact, we had our worship music on the way to the hospital. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, you're good. I don't know what's going on here, but I know that, you, that you're not going to leave me nor forsake me. I know that you got my back, oh God. I know that your word says that I can lay hands on my own body and I can decree and declare. I can command Function and flow in the name of Jesus, and it shall flow in Jesus' name. Everything get right. Everything's got to get right in the presence of God. Amen. Verse 20 says, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Amen. So the veil, the curtain referred to in the text here, 
um, hung across the entrance of the holy place. Hallelujah. To the most holy place, the, the two innermost chambers of the temple. Right? It was there. This curtain prevented anyone from entering or gazing into or even getting a glimpse of the interior of the most holy. The high priest could, could enter the most holy place only once a year to stand before God's presence and atone for the sins of the nation. But Christ is in God's presence at all times. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus Christ. I said Christ is in God's presence at all times, not just once a year as the high priest who can continually, continually intercede for us. Hallelujah. That should excite you in your spirit, man, that because of Jesus Christ, who is always seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I, that I can call upon heaven. And the word of God says, not one prayer of a righteous man shall return void in Jesus' name. So I can have the confidence and the endurance and I see myself as a giant in the things of God, that everything that I call, touch heaven shall come back to me quickly in Jesus' name. And as you gain endurance, as you gain greater faith, people of God, you don't got to yell as much. I heard your Holy Ghost. <laughs> I just get excited. Hallelujah. But you have to just see. See. Say, I see. Whoosh, I felt that. Glory to God. When you see, there's power. Hallelujah. When you see, there's power. Even Saul, who got knocked off his horse in the road to Damascus. God literally blinded his, his eyes. What did Paul say? He said, I was blind, but now I see. Oh, hope you hear me, people of God. He said, I was blind, but now I see. And it was him seeing the things of God. Seeing the power of God. That changed everything in his life. That changed it for your life. So as, you, as I say to you, that tonight as you see with great faith, that as you see the way that God sees you, as you see, God will move. God will birth things in your life. God will move things out of the way. It's like a pipe getting unclean, getting undone, you know. You've seen those videos, those, those, those uh, uh, what do they call those, those ditches? Where the pipes under the streets are clogged up. And this is interesting. I saw him pull a, I saw a video. They put a tire in that thing. And they pulled the tire through with a tractor. And I said, that's pretty smart. Because it was so, there was so much gunk in these big old pipes. They had to get creative on how to unclog that thing. Because unless it was clogged up, when the storm came, everything would back up. And wreak havoc and chaos upstream. It's no different in our life. We got to be let the spiritual things in our life be unclogged by the Spirit of God. So everything can function and flow. He said, I will bring forth a river of glory in your life. Amen. And so in order for the river to come in your life, there's got to be an access. There has to be an availability. There has to be an invitation. There has to say, Lord, here I am. Come on, Moses. Here I am, Lord. I am your vessel. Use me. Here I am. I'm available. You're like the air traffic control for God. You're saying, land right here, Lord. I'm right here. Don't miss me. I'm right here in the name of Jesus. You see me? You see me? You got to be, come on, people of God. You got to be excited for God. You got to say, Lord, I see. Oh, Rashi Kerabakata. You got to rabo kore kete, rebe kata, roshe keraba, yanda la boko shata, roshe kita, rapa koto reshata. All the days of your life. Hallelujah. 
Because you're gonna, because you're mature. You're teaching others, amen. Rather than being taught, you're developing depth of understanding rather than struggling with the basics. You're mature people. You're seeking unity rather than promoting disunity. Come on, here, your active faith rather than cautious apathy. That you're doing things of God versus the opposite things of God. Because you're mature in the Word of God, you shall prosper. You shall do the things God called you to do. Hallelujah. That because because you are mature, you shall have confidence rather than fear. Amen. Hallelujah. You shall have confidence in what God said for your life rather than fear. Because the Bible says that he did not give you a spirit of fear. Amen. That's a lie of the devil in the name of Jesus. So when that fear tries to come up, you better put it under your feet right there. Don't even tickle it. Don't play with it. Say, get under my feet in the name of Jesus. And it's got to go. It's got to go. So, so much happening in the world right now. Say, I'm not moved. I'm not moved because I know my God, the God, El Gabor, the mighty God, hallelujah, shall prevail in the name of Jesus in my life. He will cover his church. He will cover his bride. He will cover it. I declare Psalms 91 over my life. I declare Psalms 91 over my house, over this house, over this nation, over my community. You see what I'm saying? You start being led by the Spirit of God to decree and prophesy, to say the, the word of God in your life and in your situation. And I'm just trying to get this across to you in your spirit that whatever it is that you need from God, he will do it. Amen. Hallelujah. But you have to be mature. Amen. You have to be mature to get to the place. Because I'm going to say it like this. I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to be real. There's people in the, in, in, how do I say this, Lord? Um, people are doing, are, we're, we're, we're going about in Christianity. But if we are not mature, we keep going backwards. But it's in maturity in the word of God that we will advance. What do I mean by that? Because there's lots of people out there doing things, you know, glory to God, good people, right? But people are walking out still broken and busted, disgusted and oppressed and all those things. That is not what God called for the church. That is not what God called for his bride. He called his bride to prosper. He called his bride to be healed and whole and well and be delivered and set free. He called that when you walk out of this house of God, every single time a man or woman of God is up here, that you leave better than you came. The word of God says that when you come into the presence of God, when you come under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that you will be delivered. You will be set free. If you have faith to believe for it, it shall be in Jesus' name. If you need something in your life, if you need healing, you need restoration, you need deliverance, you need something lifted off of you, you can come to the presence of God. You can come to the altar of God. You can worship the Lord. And as you worship God and give it to you, you'll see he'll move it. Amen. He'll move it quickly. The ultimate rotor rooter. The price, and, it, and it's already been paid for. Amen. Them things are expensive, by the way. Lord Jesus. I had to call them folks out to my office the other day, and I got the bill. I was like, Aya, Roshere Basab, bind you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. I know they're just making a living, but Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I said, it was just one pipe. My God. <laughs> I don't know why I went there, but hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. We got to make good choices, people of God. Amen. So as we're preparing to close, people of God, I just want to say, amen, we have to push forward. Hallelujah. Your attitude will determine your altitude. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what daddy said. That's what apostle dad said. He said, your attitude will determine your altitude. I love that. Hallelujah. So your attitude will determine your altitude. Shake the earth like Jesus, people of God. You got to shake the earth. No presence, no power. No presence, no power. Practice the presence of God. Practice the presence of God in your life. Hallelujah. Again, Psalm 68 says the earth shook in the presence of God. It says the heavens also dropped rain at the presence of God. If you let God turn you into a river, you will never run dry. Amen. Amen. So when it rains, let the river flow and you'll never run dry. When it rains the glory of God in your life, it, let it flow and it'll never run dry. Amen. Put action toward your goals. Grow in Christ. Pray in the Spirit. Life is born in the Spirit. 
when the devil hits you, what's he say? Hit him back twice. Quickly. Don't play with that thing. Don't pet it. Fire in the name of Jesus. Get under my feet. Glory to God. I shall live and not die. I shall walk and run. Hallelujah. I won't be stagnant in the name of Jesus. The presence of God is powerful. Hallelujah. We must fight the fight. We must win the race. Amen. We got to go further in the things of God. We got to go further in the things of God because God has so much for you. He's got so much for you. Hallelujah. There's so much more that God wants to do in your life. Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Because you will have the light that leads to life. Amen. Jesus replied in, in John 12, he says, my light will shine for you just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can. So the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. But you see where you're going. Amen. You see where you're going. Amen. Hallelujah. First John 2, 9 says, if anyone claims I am living in the light, but hates a Christian brother or sister, that person is still living in darkness. Okay. So you got to love your brother and your sisters. Amen. Love your brothers and your sisters. Be for them, not against them. Be in union and one accord. When you see your brother laying down, pick him back up. When you see your sister laying down, pick him back up. You don't got to ask questions. Just say, I love you. Don't be nosy. It ain't your business. Just say, I love you. I pick you up in the name of Jesus. What is it that you need? How can I serve you? How can I help you? You see what you're doing? You're unclogging your pipes. You're unclogging your pipes. You're blessing your brother. You're blessing your sister. You're blessing the house of God. You're blessing the people of God in your life. Hallelujah. That you would serve one another. That you would be the light in the darkness. Because somebody may be going through a dark thing. But you can be the light of Christ in their life. Maybe you're the one person, man of God, that is the guy is the vessel that God sent in that hour, that moment of that day, to be the one person, to be the light of God in that person's life. It's not reserved for your, 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 your headship, your apostles, your pastors, your evangelists, your prophets. Amen. There's an office for those things. Glory to God. But again, he said, for all who believe in Jesus Christ. He said, go forth out and make disciples of all the people of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and letting them know I will be with them until the end of age. What's he saying? He said, go forth and disciple. Go forth and spread the good news. Let them know that I am with them. Let him know. Let her know that I love them. Let him know that I know that I know. When you take a leap of faith, Take step in faith with God. Let God take over your life completely. It changed my life. He changed my life. He changed my wife's life. He changed my family's life. We were at a point in our life, people of God, where we were on the, and we were just chaos. Just be real. On the brink of divorce, bankrupt, you name it, Right? But God showed up. In the blink of an eye, when Jesus Christ, when I said, yes, Lord, yes. Jesus Christ, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. The moment that I, heard, I said, I surrender, everything changed. Everything changed. I'm here to tell you good news tonight. Whether, whether you're here in the house of God or you're online, there's good news that God has for you tonight. That there's power, there's fire, there's miracles, there's deliverance. There's whatever you need in Christ. Whatever you need from God, he's going to give it to you tonight. Whatever you need moved out of the way. You need healing in your body, well, I'm going to pray for you, amen. And I'll, I'll pray for you. If you need healing in your body, I believe God to heal you tonight, amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit. If you need, if you need something lifted off your life, something's been heavy on you, you feel it. Come to God. Let him take it off of you. 
Hallelujah. Because everything changes when you, when you come in the presence of God. In my life it did. My wife's life it did. Turned everything around. He literally brought houses out of the earth. Right? By miracle money. Hallelujah. Finances. Business. So on and so forth. Glory to God. We're still running though, you know. We're still believing for bigger things. I'm never, I'm never, hear me. I'm never settled and stagnant. Even in the blessing. Because we can get like, oh, okay, I'm good now, God. Thank you, Jesus. No, God said there's more. God said there's more. He's going to take you higher. He's going to take you further. Why would you settle? Why would you settle? Why would you do that? When the king of glory is saying, I got more for you, woman of God. The king of glory says to you that I've got more for you. He literally says, I have more for you. It comes to you. What you need from God comes to you. I'm not just talking natural things. The spiritual things of God, more importantly, will come to you. The revelation, the fire, fire in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Fire in her belly, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Shakarakuta. Roshikatianda. Ropoko. Rishata. Roshiki. Na kito lamasa. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let it be so, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Ushikira bakata la bokusuto. Yeta boko shikita. Ropa katara bababo sushite. We got to walk in the spirit of the Lord. We have to walk in the spirit of God. Amen. Christ is in our spirit. Turn to the spirit of God in you. Hallelujah. Walk. Live. Pray in everything we do in the spirit. Remain constantly in the spirit of God. People of God. Remain in the spirit and you'll see God do beautiful and wonderful things in your life. Hallelujah. Because the more that you're in the presence of God, the more the presence of God radiates off your life. Hallelujah. If you charge that spiritual battery, as I say, you'll always be ready. He's always ready to flow and function in your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is here. Amen. The Spirit of God is here. Hallelujah. He's moving. He's doing something. Hallelujah. Because your hearts have been prepared by the word of God. Hallelujah. Because he wants to set you free in those things. Hallelujah. Woman of God, I saw you earlier. Hallelujah. You've been believing God for some big things. Some big decisions that you've had to get ready to make. Is that right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Fire in the name of Jesus. Let it flow, God. Let it come clear. Let it be clear, oh God. Her yes is yes and her no is no, Lord. Whew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That, that worry is not your worry, woman of God. Just give it to God and watch him take over. He's going to improve the transaction. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shout out to God. Hallelujah. We got to just stand in that place. We got to understand that when you approach God, the mountain will move. Hallelujah. <sighs> Hallelujah. <sighs> the Spirit of God is all over you, woman of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. More fire, God. More fire, God. Increase, increase. I thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, listen, hallelujah. I believe God is doing big things. But listen, as we said, there's an opportunity that God always gives. And that is to come before him. And to receive him. Amen. Hallelujah. So God wants to invite you tonight to come to him. If you need to renew that commitment to God, do that tonight. Don't let one day go by, people of God. Never let one day go by without knowing that you know that you know that where you are with God. Amen.
You got to be bold. You got to be real with yourself. Amen. And so we're going to pray that with you tonight. But also if you need healing in your body, if you need a touch from God tonight, if you need a refreshing, a refining fire from God tonight, I believe, God, that you would come here to the altar. I'm going to pray with you tonight by the presence of God. And God's going to unclog some things. God's going to move some things. Hallelujah. Because I see that God is doing some big things in the spirit. Hallelujah. And I pray that tonight that you see that God will bring great fire in your life. Because it will burn with fire. So everything has to be pure. Hallelujah. So I say if anything is unpure, that it be pure tonight. By the, by the word of God. By the fire of God in the name of Jesus. Let's just worship just a moment. Woman of God in the presence of God. Hallelujah.
the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. No, just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost is not enough for me. Cause we can do it, but I know you can do it. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. One more time. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. Keep going. Just one dose of the Holy Ghost. It's not enough for me. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Amen. I love it. Amen. God, it's amazing. I love it. It's so awesome. Isn't the word just amazing what God does? You know, people are the ones that cap the Lord. Literally, it's you that cap them. But when you open up yourself like this, like you just did tonight, apostles over there, he loves joining and then going back and seeing that everybody was just, man, it's God. Let's, no, 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 no limits on God no more. Amen. Come on, what God is doing in our lives, I mean, my God, isn't that a blessing? Come on, give a shout out to Jesus tonight, amen. What an amazing, amazing Lord. Refuel my son Eric, amen. Amen. I just love you all. May God continue to pour into you even tonight as you head home. There's no limitations, just one dose of the Holy Ghost. It's not enough for us, but we just need more and we need more and we need more. Remember, this is faith for life. You, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. You need faith. Faith will take you over any mountain. Faith will take you over any sickness. Faith will take you over any situation, any financials, anything. Faith takes you across. Amen. I'm telling you, without faith. If you don't got no faith, you're going to have faith. Amen. But I tell you, I'm not, going, I'm not even going to go and preach anymore. I just know that what God said shall be. Amen. So come on, just raise your hands tonight. In Jesus' name, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I shall take refuge. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. 
I shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I look and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, my dwelling place. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling for he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways in their hands they shall bear me up lest I dash my foot against the stone I shall tread upon the lion and the cobra the young lion and the serpent I shall trample underfoot because I've set my love upon him therefore he will deliver me he will set me on high because I have known his name I shall call upon him and he will answer me he will be with me in trouble he will deliver me and honor me. With long life, he will satisfy me and show me his salvation. Come on, hallelujah, amen. I'm telling you, read your word, read your word. All of my young children, read your word. I'm telling you, my son, I woke up this morning. He was in the bed. I was passing his room, and I said, Ellis, he goes, I'm reading my word, mama. 7 o'clock in the morning, my 12-year young son was reading his word. Let me tell you, parents, it's up to you what you allow your children to do. The Bible says train them up in the way they should go so that when they grow, they'll never depart. It is your job. Amen. Just as we train you, train them. Amen. So amen. Come on, Father, we just thank you. We honor you tonight. We thank you for the word that was spoken. We thank you, Father God, to continue on for the manifestation of your word tonight, refueling my son Eric and his family. Lord, I thank you for building them up and continuing to use them mightily, Father God, and use every son and daughter in this house mightily, Father God. I speak a blessing upon them as their spiritual mama, Father God. I speak a blessing upon them, Lord. Lord, financially, mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. Lack has no right to operate against them. I speak the blessing upon them, Lord. Any negativity spoken against them, Lord, I cancel it. I reverse it. Every assignment from the enemy against them, I curse it and I reverse it in the name of Jesus and I send it back to the sender in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead your blood upon them, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that they're solid in Jesus' mighty name we pray and we all say Amen. Amen. I love you. Have an amazing night.